Good morning. I wanted to start incorporating just some of the practices that I do on a daily or weekly basis to just kind of help my mental health space. So as most of you guys know, I've talked a lot about anxiety and depression that I've encountered throughout my life. And so I wanted to just show some different practices that I have brought into my life, but also just things that I'm aware of. So if any of you guys have attended a yoga class, a lot of times yoga classes start with a little breath work exercise, which is a big inhale in and then an exhale out. But I wanted to dive into reasons why, um, reasons why that practice actually works. There is a podcast by, I believe his name is Andrew Himmerman. And I think the podcast name is uh, The Himmerman Project. And he talks a lot about breath work and the actual science behind why it's helpful for us and how it actually helps us calm down. So the exercise, the little breathing exercise that you can kind of take into your uh, beginning of your day or before a yoga practice, um, it's just very, very simple. So what you do is you take a big, um, deep inhale and it's very helpful if you actually put your hand on your stomach because that way you can kind of like visualize how much air you're putting into your stomach. So you're gonna take a big inhale in. And then as soon as you get to a place where you feel like you can't take any more breath, you're just gonna sip a little bit more, go And then you're gonna do a long exhale out. And a long exhale, an audible exhale. So you're gonna go now this feels um, kind of silly if you're not familiar with this, but if um, once you kind of start getting into this motion, you realize how incredibly helpful this is. The actual audible exhale out is really, really important and it's key to this exercise because it actually stimulates our vagus nerve, which runs all the way throughout our body, kind of like a tree. And what it does is it activates the part of our body that tells us that we need to calm down. And so, as I mentioned, there's a lot of like scientific studies about the vagus nerve and how it's activated, but the audible um, exhale actually stimulates that vagus nerve and that's why this is so important. Um, I have read or heard that if you're in a place where you can't make a long exhale out, even though I highly, highly recommend that you do it if you're in a space that you can, um, but if you're in a place where you can't do a long exhale out, they, there's even studies that suggest that if you just imagine and think about you exhaling out in a loud way, that it still does somewhat of the same effect of actually sounding it out. So regardless if you can do the sound out or you're just imagining it, it's gonna be stimulating your vagus nerve. And that is going to be just a really simple exercise to Stimulate, um, stimulate that nerve and just calm us down. So this is again why we see a lot of yoga practices start off like this. So I'm just gonna kind of give you an example of the type of um, breath work exercise. So I'm gonna take a big inhale in, hold my stomach. I'm gonna sip in more.
So already I feel, I feel calmer. Um, I can even feel like the tone of my voice has changed. Uh, my body feels tingly sensation. There's lots of signs behind like breath work and the inhaling and exhaling and just all the sensations that it does to our body, which contributes to us feeling more calm. So um, this is just like a really simple exercise that you can do for regulating your nervous system, which is very, very important. Um, and then I wanted to dive into a couple of exercises for, um, or not exercises, a couple of like yoga poses or stretches that you can do that are going to help you with your, um, help you with if you're experiencing depression or anxiety. I don't, I have a habit of saying help you with your depression and I don't really like even making it a possession of, of ours our depression, my anxiety, like we just need to say I'm experiencing this and not claiming it as your own. So um, a lot of people think that yoga is like a form of exercise and in my personal belief and understanding and the way that I was kind of taught when I was in uh, Thailand for several months is that yoga is very in a small way in exercise, and it's more so just allowing us to learn how to connect with ourselves and to connect with others and to connect with the world. So there are a couple of yoga poses that are helpful for uh, depression, anxiety, because what it actually does um, is helps send blood to your pituitary gland, which is in your brain, and your pituitary gland has to do with, um, has to do with regulating um, like your adrenals and, and all of that. So your pituitary gland is what affects your depression and anxiety. Um, your adrenals affect your anxiety. So if you can rush blood to that part of your body where your pituitary gland is up here, then your, it naturally helps, helps your body like relieve depression and anxiety. So um, there's just a couple of different yoga poses that I want to show you guys. They're going to be simple and easy, and um, and you can do them just in five minutes after just a quick five-minute breathing exercise. Um, all right, so we're just going to kind of get started in a seated position, and this is going to be like a quick couple of poses, not an entire practice. So we just did a couple of breaths in. So what we're going to do is we are going to come on to our hands and feet. We're going to do a couple of cat cows. So we're going to inhale, look up, exhale, round our back, inhale, look up, exhale, round our back. And I like to just kind of move my body intuitively in cat-cow, so I might do some circles. I might twist my wrists. I might bend my wrists back, flip them over, bend back. I just kind of move freely a bit. Now, one of the first, um, like, easiest poses, or not easiest, one of the most common poses is downward facing dog, and this is great for stimulating your pituitary gland because it sends blood to your head. So we're just going to go into that. So you're going to have your hands about shoulder length apart, your feet about shoulder length apart, and your shoulder blades open. And you can either have your feet touching the floor or your heels touching the floor or not. Whatever feels good for your body right now. So we're just gonna hang out here um, for a few minutes, or moments. <laughs> So one of the next exercises we're going to do 
is we're going to um, do like a forward fold. Again, this is helping um, blood go to our pituitary gland. Now you can either have your hands rested here, you can have your hands crossed on your back, you can have your hands grasping your shoulder or your elbows. This feels a little bit more weighted here. And just keep breathing. So the next thing we want to do is do a forward fold this way. And you can either have your hands on the ground, you can have your hands on your shins, or you can have your hands here. And one of the next poses we are going to do is a pigeon and it's going to help open up our hips so we're going to set one foot down kind of in a 90 degree angle we're going to have your other one here what this does is you can see my body uh, what this does is it actually helps open up our hips which our hips store like all of our emotions in it so this is really great for depression and anxiety because it helps us release those emotions. So we're just gonna sit here for a few moments. You can either keep your hands here, you can keep your arms here, or you can even rest your head down, down here. Now what you have to do, or what you do on one side, you must do on the other side. So we're going to switch over to our other leg. Try to get your shin somewhat of a 90 degree angle. Ugh, I'm tighter on this side, which is normal. So we're going to go down here. Then we're going to come onto our backs and we're going to do what's called a happy baby pose. So you're going to have your feet up in the air and you're going to grab on to your like pinky toes or you can grab on to your big toes and you're really just going to kind of rock back and forth. And what this is doing is opening up your um, hips again to help release those emotions. You can even stretch one leg or stretch the other leg. Go back and forth. Straighten them both if you want. Okay, and for the last pose, we're going to do um, I can't even think of the name of it. <laughs> but you're supposed to end every single class with it. So what we're going to do, and this is optional, obviously, uh, but this is a really great way to get blood to go to the top of your head. Um, 
decisions. You're going to come here, push your the bottom of your back, and you're going to try to get your body as straight as possible. And you're going to put all of the weight up on your shoulders. And what this is doing is bringing the blood from the bottom of your feet all the way to your head. This pose is also really great for detoxing because it switches your blood from the bottom of your feet to the top and it's just really great for detoxing out our system and lymphatic system. Those were just a couple of poses and a little breathing exercise that's going to help you be able to um, just combat your, any type of depression or anxiety and calm you down a bit. So um, definitely, if you found this helpful, leave a comment below. Um, I'm always doing research about different strategies for just physical practices and also emotional practices that we can be doing to help our mental health. So these are just a couple of yoga poses and a little breath work. So comment below what you wanna see next. Um, and um, if you found, if you tried these exercises, you should definitely, with these exercises, hold them at least for maybe 30 seconds each. And, um, and with the breathing exercise, I don't think I mentioned, definitely try. The goal with that is to actually go about one to three minutes of full breathing exercises. So set your timer and just dive into it. So thank you guys so much. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video.